was slow today. I don't know why. It was very, it was very plat. No. Unless there we go. There we go. That's better. Ah, <sighs> welcome. Soon enough, you'll have your own, Lana. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm very happy. <laughs> welcome to the Cup, the currently unnamed podcast where we put the real and the tea in reality. And you can always come to us first to quench your thirst. I'm Logan Murphy. Say something gay. Gay. And for once, I actually cleaned out my cup mug. <laughs> so we are indeed using the cup mug today. Link in the description below. But I am drinking a homemade fruit punch that's caffeinated with crack tea but it's fruit punch this time and so i've tried to make fruit punch before and it was bad mm. because i don't love artificial grape mm. i find it a very dominant flavor and i added grape to the first batch and it just it tasted like grape it mm. was just grape this one there's berries and cherries and lemons and some orange i think maybe and it's really good Love that. And I will be decanting it out of my very my larger uh mug today. Mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. because cup mug. Because <laughs> cup mug. We love that. And I am Lana, your resident diva, here to give the tea, spill the tea, and drink the tea because you know I love me some tea per <laughs> you know. And uh if you have some tea, you know what to do. Hit me up because I love it. And um I'm actually drinking tea oh good sweet tea of course correct yes that's the only way to drink tea is sweet tea i love anybody who tea. drinks unsweetened tea i don't trust you i'm sorry i do but i drink both mm. there are certain days where i'm like i just want a bitter black iced tea with some lemon in it mm. And it's just that just hits the spot. So I'm probably going to go make some actually at some point. Mm. <laughs> that sounds really good now. Mm. I don't know. Maybe I trust you a little less. I don't know. But I do love a sweet tea. It's just I'm on a not diet, but I'm watching. I'm watching my figure. Let's say that. Like I'm not. I'm not on a diet by any means of the imagination. Mm -hmm. But I'm more cognizant about what I'm putting in my body. Let's say that. Cut up. Cheers to that. Cheers. But if I was drinking it, I would pour that in there. But I'd rather have a big, tall glass of sweet tea. This See, is for my hot tea. That's why I have this one. Because I'm like, I need all of the caffeine. And I don't want to have to keep running back and forth. So yeah, This is when my tea is piping hot. But today, Espanya wasn't piping hot. So no. it doesn't deserve the cup, the hot tea. Yeah. It's more of a sweet tea kind of day today. This was a weird episode. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what was happening. Even yeah, from so, the very beginning. It was so, so this is Lana's to her knowledge, her first snatch game. Yes. Which it really is not. I should have had you watch the season 15 snatch game. Mm. And even that was different because it was two snatch games, because they did it, I think, episode four. Mm. And it's and normally around the midway point. Right. But there were 14 queens for Snatch Game on season 15, so they did it in two rounds. But it's normally somewhere around seven, eight, nine people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, sh I should have had you watch, like, a couple other uh, American ones or, like, British ones before this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you are a fan of Match Game, yes, as am I. I. I grew up watching the Game Show Network. So, of like... Course. Matching was always one of my favorites. I, I still watch the Game Show Network. <laughs> I also still watch the Game Show Network. And to this day, I if I ever get on Drag Race, one of my primary characters that I would want to do is Brett Summers. Oh. Just oh, a Brett. cigarette and just, what the fuck did you say? <laughs> like, just, just bitchy, cigarette-laden Brett Summers. And just like, that would be my character. Um, I don't know if match game characters are actually allowed. Oh, because no one's ever done one, and it kind of surprises me that no one's done one. I so mean, I feel is... like I feel like there's some sort of like you can't do match game characters. Interesting. Anyway, we are here with Drag Race España season three snatch game. 
who did we lose in the last Kelly Roller? We lost Kelly Roller mm-hmm. in the in the previous episode. Um after they decided to put Clover in the bottom. Why? Who knows? To send Kelly home. That's why they put her in the bottom. Um, and they come back. Kelly's gone. And, um, Everyone's very sad. Very sad. I did not sad. realize that Kelly was such a, like, a, such a big figure in Spanish drag. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I never got that vibe from her. And there have been queens like that on previous seasons. The the two winners of the franchise thus far, for me, were known as, like, big name, like, staples mm-hmm. in Spanish drag, from what I understand from the show. And so I, I, would, I would say that Kelly kind of falls into that category, I guess, and I didn't really expect that. I don't know. Like I always say, there are queens that are amazing drag queens and just not good at drag race. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe Kelly falls into that category of maybe not the best at the drag race, but an incredible drag artist. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. So we come back in, we get a little bit of this uh, after Kelly's elimination, but Vanya is going through it a little bit. We see a little bit um in the first clip and then they come into the workroom the next day and Vanya's still struggling um just with you know being in the competition the pressure she is also someone that has been doing drag for I think she said what 20 years yeah something like that so she is a very well seasoned queen and this kind of process is just it's taking a toll on her and I appreciate that we saw all of this because they easily could have edited this entire situation out. Um, and I appreciate that they kind of acknowledge, like, hey, Drag Race is hard. Right. Like, we're we're making this TV show, but at the end of the day, it's a really difficult process. You have to seclude yourself away from the entire rest of the world. And it's it's weird, and it's a, it's, it's a weird little microcosm of society. Mm-hmm. It was, I was like, I was like, wow, you know, I, I do appreciate them showing because like we, we say on these shows, on all of these reality shows that it's hard to be number one, away from your family, away from the, the, what you're normally used to mm-hmm. and stuck in one place with the same people who are, you would love to say these are my friends, but these uh-huh. people are also your competitors and they're yeah. trying to go for the same goal as you and the same prize as you and sometimes you compare yourself to them or they're doing it better than me that it's a lot of pressure and so the fact that you know they were able to take the moment to show that hey yes this is hard this is pressure this is a lot and we go through a lot mentally on this show and sometimes we have moments sometimes we break down sometimes we need to step away yeah that's human and that's beautiful Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end of the day, like, are they creating TV? Yes, but it, yes. It, we are all human. Yes. And so it is It is important to show the gambit of human emotion. Yeah, you have to have a balance. Uh, yeah. So Supreme comes in in a gorgeous color blocked, like, <laughs> suit jacket situation. I was like, I love this. Um, and we get... Um, Finally, they're like, it's not a skinny, smooth twink on the pit crew. It's a bear. And I liked it. Of course. Uh, that's just me. Um, and we find out that the library is open. It's we have the library. reading challenge. Um, and it was it, it was fine. It was all right. It was, right. It was fine. I liked uh Macarena. One of her reads was like, Visa, you're always the best, but there's always a shadow of doubt. <laughs> and then Visa and like, coming, back, the Visa coming back and be like, you're, yeah, you're the one talking. <laughs> um, and then I forgot, they acknowledged at the start of the episode, um, Clover had the trans flag on her stomach during mm-hmm. the lip sync, but she messed up the flag. <laughs> And then in the reading challenge, Bestia, there was it was like something about um, hanky code, and then it, uh, Bestia cuts to Clover, and she's like, 
Clover, I know you're not good with flags. Are you doing okay? <laughs> the you shady bitch. It was good. Clover was like, ah, oh, they're so mean, but yeah. funny. <laughs> Literally. Um, most people were, were pretty decent. Yeah, some yeah. were not. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, I, I didn't put a lot of stock into this challenge. I was just like, okay. This is fine for what it is, I guess. But so Paquita wins, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. I her her best read, in my opinion, was she was like, the Macarena. You being here means um, a few things. Either this is an all stars, and by the looks of your competitors, it's definitely not. We'll or <laughs> or we're we're in the unemployment queue. Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh. I was like, oh, fuck it, oh. <laughs> And I, oop. Oh, yeah, wow. I, I, I kind of gagged at that one. I was like, oh. I was like, oh, yeah. wow, okay. Work, Diva. Oh. Like, go off, I guess. <laughs> um, and then someone did go off. Mm -hmm. uh, Vanya, Vanya fully has just a moment. Mm -hmm. And she walks off right as they're about to announce the winner of the challenge. She takes a moment, and even Supreme is like, I'm just really happy that you're all here to support her. Because clearly Vanya and Supreme have some sort of relationship. Again, I'm not sure what it is, but you can tell that they have, like, worked together for a mm -hmm. long time. Mm -hmm. And, and like, Supreme genuinely cares for Vanya. And so it it's just one of those things where it it's just a compassionate moment, even from hosts. And we've seen that a lot with, you know, the hosts that are not RuPaul. Like, we saw that a lot with Brooklyn Heights in Canada. We saw a bit of that with Nikki Dahl in France. Um, and even the hosts are human. Mm -hmm. they, their job is to keep their own personal emotions out of the mix, but they're also human. So, but Vanya comes back. Um... I liked seeing it. I was happy she came back. I knew she would. It just, she needed a, a second to breathe, which we all need. Sometimes. Of course. So we find out that the maxi challenge is Snatch Game. Do, 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 do. It's Snatch Game. And I was so excited to hear all about the celebrities that I had no clue who they were. And I only, we knew one of them. So I was happy about that. Um, but yeah, they, they dove straight into Snatch Game. So I guess, Lana, we, we can also just game. dive into Snatch Game. Of course. Snatch Game. Snatch Game. I want to highlight the contestants <laughs> because, so on the, I, you probably had no clue what was happening. Great. Okay. So on the right is Karina. She is a very famous Mexican singer. And on the left is Poopy Poison, who was a contestant on season one of Drag Race España, who did Karina for Snatch Game oh. on her season. Okay. So this was a cute little callback to season one. They got Karina and the fake Karina. Why? Who knows? I was entertained. Sure. I they loved it. To me. They were funny to me. I think that was like one, almost the best part of the Snatch Game was. was Honestly, yeah. Like, yeah, they're funny. Well, and and I remember watching season one. I was like, God, you know, his voice cannot be that like high pitched the way that uh, Poopy is doing it. And then no, no, Karina's voice is is very high. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like okay, okay, go off. Go off on work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to go through the characters individually. But Lana, what did you think about your first Snatch Game? I mean, I get the concept of the Snatch Game. I can appreciate the Snatch Game. I feel like I might not should have watched this one as my first Snatch Game. I definitely agree. 
I feel like it things got lost in translation, of course. Yes. I don't speak Spanish, unfortunately. Yes. I would like to rectify that at some point in my life. I'm working on it. Me too. Yep. Um, but I don't speak Spanish and I don't know I didn't know who the characters they were portraying, most of them. Also, trying to read the jokes, I feel like I just lost it. Yeah, as the captioning, it was it goes too fast, and some of some of our dear queens talk very very fast, so the caption moves very very quickly, and I would have to spend all my time stopping to read it, and it's a lot. But all in all, overall though, I understood the concept. I can appreciate the concept. I just feel like I just needed to. Uh, I just lost a lot of translation. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think España's Snatch Games have all been very good, despite mm-hmm. me having like a very limited understanding of who these characters are and like how they connect to each other in certain cases. We'll talk about two that connected a lot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But we start out with In the Hot Seat, this is usually the the top left is usually like the hot seat like the person mm-hmm. that they think is going to be very very funny um mm-hmm. and in that spot we had the macarena yeah. as paca la piraña who is an actress a very well-known spanish actress um she was in the 2020 series veneno if you're familiar lana talking about la veneno uh, it was on hbo i believe no um she's a funny woman from she, at least what i understand mm-hmm. and the macarena was not funny no i thought it was interesting because a lot of the a lot of what the the queens talked about in untucked was oh the, the macarena like would not stop talking over people and we didn't really see any of that Oh no, like at all. They edited all that out. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was kind of surprised. Cause I mean the snatch game ended up lasting like 15 to 20 minutes. This is very long. It's not normally this long. So it was definitely interesting. But I don't know. I don't think Macarena did very well unfortunately which is sad because there's a lot of potential with the character Mm -hmm. next we have bestia who is uh la herbas i had no clue who this was and i still kind of don't she is like a um she's on a show in spain again i'm so sorry to people that are actually spanish because just we don't we don't know who these people are we don't unfortunately i'm sorry unfortunately It, it is i mean yeah i don't know who she's supposed to be but based on her performance i was very underwhelmed like she didn't give me any idea who this person was supposed to be like is this their normal character they look they look like they're supposed to be a funny character a comedy person but i wasn't getting any comedy from bestia in this one no not at all um which is unfortunate because I, I think if it's if it's this kooky stoner lady character, if that's what what you're supposed to be, there's definitely a, a certain level of um, there's a certain level of funny that needs to be there, and it just wasn't a performance. You could have given us a performance, and you just didn't. I left still having no clue who this woman was. Exactly. So. Next up, prosthetic and all, we have uh, Ornella Gongora as 
uh, the former King of Spain, Juan Carlos the mm First. -hmm. Um, so he was the King of Spain from 1975 until his abdication in June of 2014. Um, was he forcefully abdicated or did he it just... It seems like it. It just seems like a forceful abdication because nobody is staying in power that long and then it's like, eh, I don't want it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it was um, scandals and allegations surrounding his financial arrangements. Mm -hmm, and a mm -hmm. lot of those financial arrangements, to my understanding, go along with yep. mm -hmm. one Barbara, 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 I can't speak today. What the Barbara Ray, who mm -hmm. we will talk about very shortly. very shortly. And of course, they conveniently were sat right next to each other. Oh, um, very very uh, much purposefully. <laughs> obviously, they both did very well as a result of <laughs> being sat next to each other. I really did think Ornella did a very good job with this snatch game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I enjoyed, uh, and see, this is the thing. I didn't know who he was. He just said mm -hmm. it. I, but I understood it. Like, I got what it was. I'm like, oh, this man, I don't know who he is, but he is a creepy old man. He is a scandal. Scandal written creepy old man and you know yeah. what you're playing it kudos to you i can get it i see it i didn't have to know exactly his story but to know what it was so i yes. think they he played he him and who barbara ray played a very they, they did the job that needed to be done absolutely yeah i definitely agree because then we go to vanya who is Barbara Ray, mm -hmm. who is a Spanish film actress and mm -hmm. um she was she was romantically involved with with the king allegedly it's giving me very uh, Donald Trump it's giving Donald and um, a stormy. Oh, what? I was gonna say even Donald and oh uh, what um the oh, porn no, star. Pretty... No, the first lady. Oh, Melania. Melania. It's giving yeah. a little bit of that. Even. Oh, I was I was thinking a porn star. Fair, fair enough. What, what Stormy Daniels? Yes, I was thinking. Sure, for it's sure. Giving very Donald Stormy kind of relation, except. Barbara seemed to kind of be into this guy, and Stormy is like, absolutely not ever again in my life. No. So, no. okay. <laughs> um, I thought between the two, I thought Vanya did a lot better because it seems like she has a lot more material to work yeah. with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we'll talk about it. Maybe Vanya should have won. Maybe I don't. I, uh, okay. I don't know if I agree with that. Okay. Because if we say, I'm sorry, let me adjust my uh -huh. camera. Um, if we give it to Vanya, the only way Vanya's character works is if she had uh, Hornella's character with her. You know? I disagree. I think I, I think there was enough I, she was definitely very aided by the fact that Ornella was right there. But I think they had that chemistry that they bounced off of each other played a major factor into it. Whereas the person yeah. who did win could only be on their own. So I feel yeah. like if you would have gave Vanya the win, they would have had to share the win with Corn with Ornella. And I would have been very. I honestly thought that's what was going to happen. I mean, I would have been okay with that. If I would have been that. fine with that. But, but yeah, just for one to win without the others, like they were like peanut butter and jelly, supposed to go together. You just mm -hmm. need that togetherness to make that chemistry work and to give that performance to the 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 made it funny. It made it funny with yeah. the both of them. When the other person, it was just them being funny on their own. So yeah. 
Yeah. Speaking of the other person. Speaking of the, we'll just say the winner. The winner. Uh, Pinchadora as Lola Flores. Uh, so I I know vaguely who Lola Flores is. She's a very she's another very very famous Spanish actress of um, pretty much the the mid and late 1900s. Um, she she did a lot of you know different roles. She was a very very versatile actress and whatever Pinchadora did, like I got the character from what Pinchadora was doing. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Uh Uh-huh. When you say the late 1900s, what dates are we talking? um, Specifically, she was active. um, Her years active, according to Wikipedia, would be 1939 to 1995. 1939 to 19 what? 95, which is when she died. Ah, 95. So 1995 was what you would consider the late 1900s? No, not necessarily. I mean, that's more turn of the century, but a lot of what she, a lot of her major area (laughs) of, I know what you're trying to say, but. It's just that late 1900s thing. It hits well, me right, okay. It hits me right I understand head. that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's okay. It's okay. It's it's the term you young people. At least I wasn't. I'm trying to use the like more technical. Term. It's it's the term you young people have decided to use when you talk about my generation. At, at least I was born in the 1900s. I mean, oh jeez. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> yes. Pichinota, uh I understood the character. I might not know who she is, but I understood the character. And I feel like she played it very well. She played it like she made me understand that this character is like and she talks a lot. She goes good. She just goes and she goes and she goes and just it was it was funny. Yeah. It was it was it was good. She looked good. She looks I, great. I, I'm you know. I am starting to come around to Peach Me more too. and more every episode I watch. Because at first, the very beginning, I was like, I am not going to like this person. This one is going to get on my nerves. I'm coming around. But I am slowly but surely coming around to Peach And I, you know, I kind of love that. I love when somebody changes my mm-hmm. mind. Make me eat my words make me say you know what i shouldn't have snapped just you Uh make me do that and she is doing that and every week i'm like okay i see you i see you yeah she did a great job she did a great job i I, I said today she that was a well-deserved win for me in my opinion i i think i would agree with you it would for me it would have been well, honestly, we'll talk about Visa, but I think any of the top four could have won. Yeah. And I would have understood and been perfectly fine with it. Yeah. Same. It's interesting. I'll just, I'll just say it's interesting that Pincho Dora won. We'll talk about it, but... Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. So now we've come to the part of our program, Lana, where we have to discuss Paquita as Peppa Pink. Not pig. Not pig. Pink. Pink. Paquita. Paquita. I'm looking at you. Because I hope you watch this episode. Because if people don't know, Paquita has watched our episodes before. Petita. Oh, it's Petita. It's Petita. It's Petita. Paquita. I hope you're watching this. Because I absolutely adore you. You're one of my favorites on the show this season, Paquita. Paquita, I want you to know, this was a choice. It was a choice. I mean, for me, for me, just me personally, I'm not a fan of Peppa Pig. Anyway, I feel like oh, Peppa really? Pig is a horrible character. Oh. A very horrible character for children should not be watching Peppa Pig because I feel like Peppa Pig is the most whiniest person in the world and is teaching children to whine and be horrible and ungrateful. Wow. But that's just my opinion. I'm not a fan of Peppa Pig. Okay. But 
the fact that you just was Peppa Pink, even though you're still Peppa Pig, was a choice. Interesting. Interesting in... I, I, okay, let me stop. I didn't like this character, and I didn't like the portrayal of this character. I don't think pa, uh, Paquita did a good job on this. I agree. <laughs> However, I think it's so stupid <laughs> that I love it. It's so stupid. I just the the gall of someone. Oh, you're doing Snatch Game. Oh my god, you're prepping for Snatch Game. Who are you doing? Peppa Pink. What? Hmm? Girl, I live for it. Honestly, was it good? No, no, <laughs> not at all. But there was something I enjoyed about it, and I I couldn't tell you what it is. I don't think she should have been in the bottom two because mm. I think her performance was more memorable than somebody else's. Okay, but that's just me, <laughs> and we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay, but. Next up, we have Clover. She is Maite Gardiano. Guess what? No clue who this who this person is. Not sure, but she's sure. a TV personality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she is a forty-six-year-old bus driver. Uh, she was on. Oh, she was on Big Brother. Oh. She was on Big Brother España. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Gran Hermano. How did she do? She got 17th and only lasted 12 days. <sighs> oh, no. Well, she must have made an impact if she lasted. She was 17. the first evicted. Oh, no. You last 12, 17, what, 12 days, you said? 12 days. 12 days. And, but somebody portrayed you on Snatch Game, so she must have made some type of impact of some sort. And, Something. yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think Clover did a bad job. No. I was just very confused by everything she did. <laughs> and you know, that I feel like being confused is better than being bored. Mm -hmm. So I think Clover, Clover for me was just perfectly safe. Yes. Really the only person for me that was just perfectly safe. Um... Yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> Not a whole lot to talk about with that. No. Uh, we go from, from a Big Brother contestant to another actress. We've got Petita doing Sara Montiel, um, who was a an actress and singer. Um, and she was the highest paid star of Spanish cinema in the 1960s. Okay. Again, let me start. Petita. <laughs> Petita. Let me say this. And I know you watched. Um, not me reaching my whole spiel that I just right. watched with Petita. But Petita, I know you have watched our our um, coverage and you know how much we adore you on the on the cup. And we would love, love, you know, we, we do adore you. We love everything about you. But this wasn't it, girl. This wasn't it. I don't even know what to say about this. This just wasn't it. It, it didn't give me anything. It was very, it was very queen and of giving me nothing. Nothing at all. I so. feel like she was safe because of her runway. Oh, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. we will discuss. Uh -huh, but uh -huh. I 
feel like she was safe because of her runway. I agree. I agree. I didn't. I don't know who this woman is. Still. I don't know, and still don't know. I have a good idea of who Maite is, and I, I mean, I was confused the whole time by Clover's performance, but sure. I don't. But sure. we still love you. We still love you. Adore you, Petita. I feel like this one specifically is probably just like just a language barrier and like yeah. a not knowing who this and woman not is. not knowing. Yeah. I feel like if we knew who this woman was, I would get it. Maybe. And she was clearly safe for the judges. So right. whatever she did across the snatch game and the runway, whatever she did made her safe. Her safe. So that's great. Love it. Right. Good for you. Love that. Love it. Last up is Visa as Paulina Rubio. Now, this is the one actual real person that we both knew. She's a mm -hmm. pop star. Mm -hmm. But Visa, I guess, was doing a specific version of Paulina Rubio. Like, on Instagram Live, drunk off her ass Paulina Rubio. <laughs> and I'm going to be really genuinely honest. Maybe Visa should have won Snatch Game. I loved Visa's performance. I appreciated Visa's performance. I really did. I thought if Visa would have won, I would have been very happy with that. I would have been okay really? with it. I would have understood it. Um, I thought Visa did a really great job at this performance. I understood it. I was like, oh, she's drunk somewhere. I don't I didn't know what it was Instagram. I didn't know all of that. I just knew You get an award. And <laughs> you get one and you, and you get like, one. Another award. Like right. it was so good. One for you. And he just won for you. <laughs> and he just for, I just love that. I thought it was oh. I thought it was good. I thought it was perfect for this moment for what she was doing for Snatch Game. Yes. I thought it was great. I enjoyed it very much. No notes. Really true. None. It was good. None. None whatsoever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was Snatch Game. Mm -hmm. um, there was actually a moment in between Snatch Game and the runway that I forgot about, but uh, is important for future episodes now that we've seen them. Um, we come back into the workroom the next day. It's Elimination Day, and everybody's standing around the table, and Pinchadora comes for Petita, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. saying that Petita was barging in and, like, just wasn't, like, good and there wasn't any like decorum during snatch game and it was like it's the whole situation mm -hmm. i was confused <sighs> why <laughs> this was happening but i was like this is the first little bit of drama we've gotten uh I mean, and I mean, i'm fine with it i mean i'll be i would be more fine with it if the editors actually showed us why they were talking like that because we didn't get to see as much as um, Petita barging in over people or having no... Like, we didn't see that. It looked like everything ran smoothly. Everybody talking. This. They edited it so good that we didn't see the drama. But then when they go back into the workroom, they're talking about how much this person... It's all like off-camera stuff. Right. And I'm like... Well, why would you, if you go talk about it on camera, then you need to show us on camera. You, we, we basically guessing what they talking about. And Because the whole thing is like, Petita told Ornella, I had a joke and couldn't get it in because of X, Y, Z reasons. Like, and this is also where it's brought up that Pinchadora and the Macarena are talking over people, not just in Snatch Game, but like overall. And we have seen that a lot from the Macarena. So that made sense for me. Mm -hmm. But we haven't really seen anything major from Pinchadora. So that's why I was confused. I was just like, I don't know what's happening. I'm confused. But okay, work, Diva. Like, right. right. Okay, great. Um, and full transparency, we're filming this after ex episode six has dropped. So we know that tensions continue. <laughs> And we will discuss that in our episode six coverage. But shall we go to the runway? Run, run, yes, run, run, please. runway. Well, first, the judges. Uh, for sure. once, I decided to pull everybody's looks because I was lazy. Sure. Um, but yeah, so we have the judges. 
Um, Supreme, I don't like it. I don't like the wig at all. I don't like the dress. I don't really like anyone's outfit except for La Tere, the guest judge. Mm -hmm. She looks yeah. cute. Yeah. She seems lovely. So She seems lovely. <laughs> yeah. We move. So all this damn talk about feathers, Lana. Yeah, man. Category is Arriba La Pluma. All about the feathers. Thank God. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first up, we have Ornella Gungora. This is Owl a look. lady woman. This is a look. This is I'm a look. To, I'm going to go full screen now because I want to make sure Great. I can see all these. This was a look. I felt what? like if she would have not had on the mask, it still would have been a good look. I think the I mask. Agree. I think the mask like takes it a bit too far, and mm. it it lets me think you didn't want to do your makeup, so you threw on a whole face mask. The difficulty I have is that she has absolutely no shape in this garment. No whatsoever. And I know that that's not probably the purpose of this garment however it's drag race mm -hmm. and even if you're doing owl woman i want owl woman with figure mm -hmm. i want a little bit of snatch in there not a whole lot we don't need a ton but just a little bit of uh just a little bit in and then things things would be good i also hate this shoe yeah you this, i like the shoe I think the shoe is the absolute wrong shoe for this scenario. I don't know what shoe would work, but it, just not this one. I mean, I don't, I just think this needs a little bit of editing, like a little toning back. The I mask agree. was too much. If you're going to do all of those feathers behind you and the chest flow, you know, it was just a little too much. I'm not a, a fan of the shoe either. And not because it's a boot but because it's just a plain iridescent boot. Like, put some feathers on the boot. If you go do some feathers everywhere, put some feathers on the boot. And, you know, give feather feathers. But, like, it, it just needs a little toning down. Like, tone down the face mask, uh, up, elevate the foot, the shoe, and you would have had a, a great garment. Or it could have been a, not even a boot, like a strappy number with some feathers hanging off the, the back the, sure. give a little tail feather at the back it just was a little too much like it needs to be pulled back just a smidge yeah, yeah. i'm gonna give ordinella a 65. yeah 60 for me the mask kind of ruins it for me ah lover beach she looks amazing beach ah beach. Bish. God, she <laughs> looks incredible. I love this look. Her oh. hair, this, this wig was everything. A wig is just is wigging beat. in the perfect wig kind of way. Her face is snatched and beat to the gods. God. And the feathers not overpowering. Uh, I mean, because it's just a simple black dress, like the the like yeah. latex dress. It's a simple latex dress, but the feathers just pock it up and pop it. Uh, and then the feathers at the bottom, perf. I I I love this look. I love that the the lighter feathers are contained in this middle section, yes. and I love that the, the way that they plume out because again, we're getting shape. Yes. Without having to sacrifice feathers. Yes. Um, oh, I just fucking love this. I would have never put latex and feathers together. It's, 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 but my cup is overflowing. It's oh, It's got stuff in it, so I'm not going to dump it out. But It's um, overflowing for oh, me. It's, it's so gorgeous. It's this gorgeous. is the best she's looked. Yeah, yeah. I like, get it. Uh, love it. I love it. And on a week where like there is a universe she maybe could have been in the bottom, mm -hmm. this erased any any idea that she could have been in the bottom. Yeah. So let's move to Bestia. Now we talked a little bit before we recorded 
about Bestia. And I think I put it, I think I put it best where it's like, this doesn't feel like, this feels like a look with feathers as opposed to a feather look. Mm. But with that said, I don't mind it. I'm intrigued by it. I am like in the middle with this. I don't hate it, but yeah. I don't love it. I feel like it's the feathers are like an afterthought. I think the more focus was on the bodysuit and the mask mm -hmm. and not, and then it was like, okay, let me throw some feathers on here because it's a feather look. Exactly. So I'm kind of like, I I like, but I don't like. Eh. I would give I this an average was... 50 because I'm not, I'm very much in the middle with this. I'm going to give it a 60. Okay. I think it's good. I'm just, I'm confused a little bit. Why are we a ninja, but with feathers? Right, like, feather just, ninja. I, like, what? I like that concept. I just, I don't think this is that. Okay. But I love the fabric that the garment is made out of. That blue with the like yeah. silver foil on it. That I love that. It's a beautiful blue. The color is beautiful. The color is pop. The red and the blue together are wonderful. I'm just yeah. confused. I'm just confused by the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. The Macarena. Here's the thing. I love the headpiece. Oh, the headpiece is fantastic. It's fantastic. She but, put no thought into the rest of the look. Exactly. Because I'm like, you were so concerned about this headpiece, which is great. Yes. Where's the feathers on the rest of the outfit besides around your neck? Like, she she did not give me tail feathers. Like, if you would have just given me some tail feathers on the back of that so I can have... All I need is just one me. big feather on the back. That's all right. I need. Right. Just some, a tail, something mm -hmm. kind of a feather to take it off. It's like you just only cared about the headpiece, and which is stunning, but it's like, baby girl, you, put, you need to put some more effort into the rest of the look. You put, you paid so much for the headpiece that you had to do what you could for the rest of the look. And what you came out with is this like elbow length blue bolero Ugh. and a the world's skinniest belt to attempt to cinch your waist right. and then a grant granny panty and some chains like it's just oh it's it's bad it wasn't it was oh, it wasn't like it, it it just wasn't and it's like and even the bolero and the panty don't look like the same blue they're not the same, and neither is the shoe. And neither is the shoe, and I'm like, oh, and neither is the blue oh. in the peacock feather. Right, like if you're gonna do that, it should have been green, like the peacock feather. The peacock feathers are like green. I don't want to disrespect whoever made this headpiece because I think whoever made this headpiece is obviously very good at what they do. Mm -hmm. However, I will be pleading today because this look is bad. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> The headpiece can't even save it for me personally. I'm sorry, Macarena. I think you're a lovely person from what I have seen on TV. And I think you're a great drag artist. However, I will be pleading. I I, I won't plead because of the headpiece alone. And because I think that headpiece is spectacular in itself. That it okay. deserves some kind of a score. But it's not going to be high. Macarena, sure. just please know that and it's not because of you and what you can do it's just that the rest of this outfit is just not giving so I'm going to give this a 20 because I feel like the headpiece alone is magnificent and sure. the yeah but everything else it was a throwaway next is Paquita, Paquita. there's something off about it for me I don't think it's bad by any means. It's mm -hmm. not a bad look. Mm -hmm. I, kind of similarly to Macarena, all the pieces look very good individually. Well, I don't even really think that with 
I'm not getting out of this video. I think all the pieces look good, just not all together in a weird way. Like, I like this, like, bustier situation, and I like the, like, high-waisted panty, and I like the thigh-high boot, and I like the feather plume in the back, and I like the wig, and the makeup is cool, but it just... I'm missing something and I don't know what it is. Something to bring it together. I feel like everything is yeah. very disjointed. I agree with you. Everything is very disjointed. Like the hair is cool, but it doesn't go with the with the bottom half of the outfit. The hair goes with the plumes in right, the back. The plumes, but it doesn't go with the like the corset or the front and the And then that's giving like the, goth showgirl. Right. It's it's I feel like if you're gonna go goth showgirl. Go all out. Like, give me a black lip. Give me a dark, sure. dark eye. Give me... Well, it is give, a dark eye, but it's a very minimal eye. No, it needs to be darker. I need to be... I sure. need to see the goth. Because even the uh, the things on her arm and how she has a... Like, it's uh -huh. not a, it's not a glove. It's makeup up yeah. the arm. And it's, you know, it's, an, it's cute. But it's like... Go all the way up your arm. <laughs> like... Give me more. See, I think this is the the, the thing with I, I felt with um, Hernella's uh, look. Mm -hmm. uh, what I said, edit it and take it down just a little bit. She needs to edit it, bring it up, like not edit, but take it more. Like, give me more. It's just something needs to yeah. connect the dots. It wasn't connecting. But every yeah. individual piece looks great. Something just needed to connect it. And like I said, I don't know what it is that it needs to connect it. Maybe if the plume was upright as opposed to like out and jutting in the back, maybe. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I think I all know. the pieces together are good. So I'm going to give this a 70, but mm -hmm. I'm just missing that unifying piece. Yeah, sure. I, I agree with the 70. I don't think it's a bad look. I just don't think no. something it needs to be connected. The dots just Honestly, have not been connected. When she took off the feathers and the lip sync, I kind of liked it more. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know. <sighs> I want to like this more than I do. Right. Agreed. Pinchadora. I didn't hate this look. I don't love this look, though. I love the look more. With, I like, I won't say love. I like don't, the look. Don't open the coat. <laughs> don't take off the coat. No. Like I, when she walked on the runway with the coat on, I was like, oh, that's beautiful. I was like, this oh, coat. this gown. And then so I was like, beautiful. oh, no, it's a coat. Right. When she took the coat off, I was like, oh, oh. I kind of lost this luster. Yeah. Because then what the, the coat, fuck is the shoe? Yeah, the sh I it's mean, like a duck. Yes, it's a duck shoe. No, it's a duck shoe, and I get it because she was a duck. She laid the egg. The farmer or the goose? It was the golden the goose. goose. Yeah, like right, I get the golden goose the egg. I get it. I get I it. But I'm like, do I like it? I don't know if I like the shoe because I feel like it's too baggy. Like if you're gonna put that, at least make it fit your legs. Like it was too baggy, and it was just. Once she took off the coat, it lost its appeal for me. This whole just look. keep the coat on. Keep the I was coat on. Just magnificent rich woman in a gorgeous ostrich feather coat. And then the just uh But she wanna tell the story of the goose. I know. And for me but it just it makes it less effective. I do. I I think she's taking the farmer thing a little too far. Like yeah. it doesn't have to be incorporated in every aspect of her drag race experience yeah. but I feel like if she would have just not did the goose and not had that shoe on and just had that drape that coat uh, and like you say be an opulent woman with an ostrich feather coat and some big jewels and so, she needed the neck piece oh, it would have been I would have loved if she had just open the coat but just a little bit and there was just nothing like just nothing on underneath and showing like a little bit of body because she does like to show a little bit of body just open it but make sure you like tape the coat on the Have inside so that way it doesn't just fly all the way open yeah like that would have been oh that would have been so cunt i would have loved that 
So that's also not necessarily Pinchadora, but I would have loved to see something like that from her. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to give her an 80 because I think the coat and the wig are phenomenal. Yes. I'm just going to refuse to acknowledge the rest of the look. Right. Because <laughs> the coat would, is just so good. Yeah, I would give it an 85 because the coat was phenomenal. I, I kind of love it. And the wig. She looks amazing. The wig is oh, so good. Stunning. Her oh. face beat. Love it. <gasps> yes. Let's Bitita. talk about this. <laughs> what the fuck is this little bowl cut? I don't care. I love it. Love it. Oh, this, this little pixie bowl cut. And she is the feather. When she came out, I was like, her, it, she's the quill. Oh, my. <gasps> So good. I loved so it. Good. I loved every bit of this. I own my only little thing. I wish it was in the back too. I wish the quill went up the back and it would like they like met at the top. Like it would have been like a thing she wore over her. But other than that, baby. My um and the saggy body bodysuit. My biggest issue is that the bodysuit ends above the ankle. Mm. Like I mean, but that, it matches I, her skin so well. You can't even tell. But you can tell. I could tell on the runway, and I can tell here. It's just too baggy. I mean, it's, it's just, really... yeah, it just, there were, but the idea is so good. The it's execution so good. just isn't all the way there. I'm going to give her an 80. I would give her a 90 because I feel like it's just shy of the mark of being perfection. Sure. Yeah. Vanya Vanilla Vanilla. Oh. Okay. We talking about headpieces. Oh. oh my god. They had to zoom out the photo to get the full headpiece. When you got I just standing up for you, you know you've done something right. They like brava, brava. This like, is so good. This is what I expected. Yeah, this was so good. Like, there's nothing wrong with this. Look, the colors are popping and amazing. Each feather is purposely put somewhere, placed. It's, nothing looks out of place. Even with the jewels and the, everything in the front on the bodysuit, it's it's great. This yeah. look is great. Yeah, it's, it's really spectacularly done. Tits out. This, I Love feel it. like, is the real Vanya. We're just now, I'm like, oh, good, Vanya's arrived. Right. It really does feel like, oh, she's finally made it to Drag Race. I'm happy to see it. She looks um, amazing. I, I, yeah. it gives, it's giving very showgirl, Moroccan showgirl. Showgirl, Carnival, Carnival Vegas, yeah, like everything. all of it. Uh, my cup is full. full. Overflowing. Overflowing. I'll stick to a full. I am overflowing. I'm I'm work. floored, gassed. Work. But. And uh so the reason oh, why I didn't, didn't the reason the reason why I didn't say that Vanya was overflowing is because Visa is our last up, and this is both of them. Black, please. I'm not even. I have no this words. is just, just drown me, drown me in whatever it is in this. This is beautiful. I. <laughs> Visa, I, I, okay, I, so I didn't dislike Visa at the start of the season, but I was like, oh yeah, Visa's Visa's good. Visa is the one that really I'm just like, oh my god, you are so good. I, I love this look. I from the moment it walked on the runway to the second it walked away, I loved every bit of it. It, it was very 360. I loved yes. every ugh, every angle, every look, Incredible. makeup in Saying good, like, are you kidding me? I'm so happy that we're seeing um, Mexican heritage pieces on Drag Race. We saw a lot of that on Drag Race France with Olita Banana. We saw a lot of it. I, I'm intentionally naming the two new hosts, unintentionally naming the two new hosts of Drag Race Mexico. But Valentina did a lot of that with her drag on Drag Race US. Um, I, I love that Vise is doing it now. I'm very excited for, we're all very excited for Drag Race Mexico because it's just, it's going to be so good. I already know it's just going to be incredible. And I'm so happy that like having grown up with a lot of, um, a lot of Mexican heritage around me and getting to learn all about that 
from a young age, I, I, I just, I have so much reverence for this look. My cup is overflowing. Work, Lisa. Uh, yeah, please. I already said it. I can't Lisa. drown me in all of it. It's beautiful. So then I'm going to ask you, Lana, what was your favorite runway look? Oh, Jesus. Please don't do that to me. I think we can agree on the top three. Okay. Visa. Vanya. Uh, Vanya. Cool. And, uh, yes. Yes. Most definitely. So that was easy. Um, so in this episode, we actually had a top four mm -hmm. um, for, for obvious reasons. So our top mm -hmm. four was uh, Ornella, Vanya. Obviously, they worked very well together. Visa mm -hmm. and then Pinchadora with the win going to Pinchadora. Mm -hmm. Like we've like uh, like I've said throughout the episode, I think any of the four of them could have won and I would have yes. been okay. Yeah. I think my most optimal optimal scenario given runway as well mm -hmm. would have been either a Vanya win or a mm -hmm. Vanya and Hornella win. I would have I been especially because neither of them have won a challenge yet and they've both been doing very well. I thought this was going to be the opportunity for Supreme to say, both of you have a win. There we go. And establish them as real front runners instead of they're kind of in this like middle spot. And I honestly do see both Ornella and Vanya at the end of the competition. Okay. So I, I, for me, from a, from a production standpoint, I was a little confused as to why we're giving another girl her second win when you could establish and justify Vanya and Ornella winning. But I do think Pinchadora winning was very valid and deserved. Mm -hmm. So, so um, we end up with a bottom three of Paquita, Bestia, and the Macarena, with the bottom two being the Macarena and Paquita. Do we agree? Yes. I think I do as well. I could have seen um I could have seen Bestia in the bottom over Paquita, but I think runway and track record in if you put those into into consideration, I think Bestia could have been low and she was. So we see Paquita and the Macarena Lip syncing mm -hmm. to Desatame by Monica Naranjo. Now you know, yes. I honestly thought they were going to do a bottom three. I think I would have been more okay with a bottom three. I thought they, they have were before. Drag Race Hispania it, is not uh, shy about doing bottom threes. Yeah, so I thought it was going to be a bottom three because I felt like all three of them deserved to be down there and doing it. And I think I would have been more okay with it. But mm -hmm. anyway, you probably had no clue the significance of this lip sync. And I'm, specifically I'm, 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 I'm thinking party. it was Eurovision. No. Okay. I don't believe she has been at Eurovision. But um, when the Macarena was eliminated on season one of Drag Race España, she had to lip sync to a song by Monica Naranjo. Ah. And she is once again lip syncing to a Monica Naranjo song. Mm -hmm. And so the moment I saw, I heard that, I was like, oh no. I'm sure she said the same thing. She probably was like, this is the one song I didn't want. Can I be honest? Mm -hmm. I would have been fine if they had both been eliminated. As much as I adore both of them, mm -hmm. this was not the best lip sync of the season. This was very underwhelming. It was very like, yeah. uh, okay, both of them. I wasn't impressed by either one of them, honestly. So I definitely would have been okay and understood why they say both of you sashay away because, honey, neither one of them were giving what needed to be gave in this moment. Yeah. Unfortunately. Just, no. Mm -hmm. 
I think if there had to be a winner, which in this case it, there did, I do think agree with the winner. Mm-hmm. Akita won. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we lose the Macarena, which is interesting. I don't know necessarily, like when I saw her come back this season, I didn't know how she was going to do. I did expect her to go further. Because I thought her drag had really elevated over the couple of years since her original season. But this is a very strong cast. True. So I mean, honestly, I thought that Macarena was going to be gone a long time ago. But that's just... Maybe yeah. she should have gone home week one. Who knows? But, but what else? <sighs> but this was her second chance yep. to come back. And now she'll have a third chance. To come back. The second opportunity drag. I, well, in her case, it would be the third. But yes. So we still, well, now at the time of us filming after episode six has come out, we do know when the, the comeback is happening. But um, who knows when it is? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, so we will be back very soon for episode six. Any final thoughts on episode five, Lana? It was mid. Yeah. We still spent an hour talking about it, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so thank you. Well, yeah, we we talk a lot. It just happens. But it happens. thank you so much for joining us for Drag Race España. Um, thank you for all the support we've been getting on España. España has been doing very well for us, as it has always done well for us so i appreciate it we all appreciate it so make sure to subscribe do all the youtube things because you're on youtube and you know the things to do and the things not to do so go do the things uh get your merch link below follow us on all the socials do the things with the things and the stuff and the things uh and cheers lana cheers logan cheers bye uh Goodbye now. Adios. Adios. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.